Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Ocarina of Time. In the last part, we started the adult section of the Spirit Temple. And in this part, we're going to see how far we can get now. I guess. Okay. First thing you're going to want to do is, you see that little Triforce down there? Pretty sure you can jump to it, but cover boots help too. And you should know what to do. And it looks like only one chest appeared, but it actually made two appear. It just doesn't show the second one. So if you long shot back up here. Yes, you can long shot torches if you didn't know. You'll see there's another chest here now. And what do we got? A blue ruby. Joy. But we also have a switch here. Remember that, and... It opens the door down there. Okay, we'll explore that in just a minute. First, we'll go back over here. And you can long shot to the chest over there. Like so. Open it. Open it. Open it up. And we get another small key. Okay, you can also alternately just jump from up here to get to it. Anyway. Go here. And remember that skull toy we saw as a kid? Well, we can now get it. If I play the song right. There we go. Scarecrow song, make Pierre appear. And get the last skull toy in the dungeon. Yes, this is the last one. I'll prove it to you right here. See? All Skulltal is done. We actually only need two more to have all of them. So that's pretty nice. And wow, those pots tried to get us all the way up here. Stupid pots. Okay, next. Might as well see what's in this room. Okay, this is actually another completely optional thing you can do. But you'll have a series of these blocks to push, so... Let us push them. Very slowly. Walk, push, shuffle. That takes forever and a day. But what can you do? And once you've done that, you can Mega Tom Hammer the switch. And it causes a little elevator that will travel back to the main room. you can kind of see there. Just a little shortcut. I guess if you need berries or supplies of any some sort, you can use it. Anyway, back in this room. I feel I should show this before I leave. I, I don't know why this is possible, but you actually can long shot the nipples of the statue as Attacking Toucans tried to point out in Lucas LP. Like that. I, I'm not sure why that's a thing, but it is. Anyway. Go ahead and long shot back up here. And with our key, we can open the locked door. Okay, this is just a little corridor with a random beamos. Just run on by. Okay, and this time, instead of having just one Nubus, we have three to deal with. Okay, hopefully I'll have enough magic to take care of them real quick. So I really don't want to rely on the switch. But you can either use Sin's Fire, or you can do what I just did and pull out Fire Arrows. I think this is the first time I've actually showed them off anyway. They don't use very much magic, so they're pretty convenient. Okay. You can see Navi is glowing green there. That's because there is an invisible time block there. But that's only if you kill the Anubis, the uh, 
legit way, I guess. By pressing that switch, making the ring of fire, and then making them copy your movements into the fire. But that's complicated, and fire arrows or dense fire just take them out with one hit, so... Yep. Okay, next, just... Don't fire arrow the Beemos. Bomb the Beemos. Come on, Link, we learned this in Dungeon 2. And that opens the gated door over there. Let us see what's inside. Okay, this can either be a really difficult or really easy puzzle. Depending on how you handle it. The best way to do this is... You have to have something on a statue on that switch. But all of those armos are alive. So they only stay on it for a couple seconds. Stand near the door. Hook shot the one in the back. Said hook shot. Hook shot the one in the back. Activate it. Make it step on the switch. And head to the door. Easy as that. Okay. Um, and in this room, there are two invisible chests here. Um. Hold on. Yep, two invisible chests. One on each side of the hallway. Each one containing a recovery heart. Okay. And head to this door and... We have a battle with an iron knuckle. Once again. This can actually be a little more challenging as we're not our usual small self, so... We can't just use our small size to avoid a hit. I'll go ahead and do that. Get our power crouch stab ready. And I was going to take this opportunity to show off Mayru's love, but I have a feeling I do not have enough magic. And I don't. Okay, so I'm going without it. And... Wow. Whoa. Come on, Link. The hoverboots actually kind of saved me there for a minute. Only took one hit. But yeah. That is the second Iron Knuckle battle, and that went smoother than I thought. Didn't even need Thaver's love. Sweet. Okay, moving on. As usual, second chest drops. Well, not as usual, but just like the other hand. And this time, no annoying owls, we can just open it right up. And let's see what we got. You got the mirror shield! The shield's polished surface can reflect light or energy. Press R to use it. Sweet. The final shield in the game. And that actually completes all, all our equipment here. Okay. The only drawback of the shield is it, it cannot reflect physical attacks. So if you want to bounce back at Deku Scrub's nut, you'll have to switch back to the other shield. But yeah, that is our dungeon treasure. Second one, actually. If you count the silver gauntlets. Okay, with that, we can take care of the puzzle on the other side of the room here. Show off the mirror shield. Hold it up. And reflect light into the sun. Go through this door. Open the chest. This time, no life life dropping down from the ceiling. And get a small key. And finally we can open this locked door and... Man, I thought it was gonna fall there. And... We reached that, reached that room I mentioned earlier! Remember what I said you should keep in mind? You can... You know what, we'll save this for the next part. So next time off of time, we will tackle this moving wall. Either one of the easiest or most difficult obstacles in the dungeon. Depending on how you look at it. See you guys then.